I look down and there is blood everywhere in the toilet. Um, and I remember just feeling so alone. <laughs> welcome back to my channel so today's video is gonna be a personal one and if you've been watching some of my previous videos I've mentioned that I have had a miscarriage so this story is going to be about my first pregnancy um, which was in August of 2017 so since then I've had one healthy little girl and I'm now pregnant with baby number two or three, however you want to count it. So this story is to really help other people who are going through the same thing or people who are just curious about miscarriages. I really didn't know anything about it. I feel like miscarriages um, or talking about them is taboo. People feel ashamed to talk about it. I know I did at one point. I felt embarrassed. Um, about what happened and just to forewarn you I am almost 21 weeks pregnant and um, obviously such a personal raw story that I may cry um, but that's okay so I just want to go through all the details it may be a longer video but I hope the information that I provide is helpful if you find this video helpful please give my video a thumbs up I would love for this video to reach others that are struggling through miscarriage or infertility and I hope you subscribe and stick around to watch other videos. So with all that being said, I'm just going to start out with a little bit of a backstory about my husband and I and kind of where we were at with trying to conceive. So at the point where we conceived, my husband and I were married for two years and we had just started the conversation about possibly wanting to try to have children, but we weren't really serious about it yet. I was more on board than my husband was. My husband was very scared of having kids. He knew he eventually wanted to have them, but he was scared of the disruption, so to speak, of just changing our lifestyle and his lifestyle and all that stuff. So I was always one of those women that thought, you know, it could take us a while. There, I never showed any symptoms that we would have a hard time conceiving, but you just hear like, it's probably not going to happen the first try, all that stuff. I started to notice some weird symptoms that I haven't experienced leading up to my period before. Like I had this weird sharp pain in my like breast armpit area for weeks or like days I should say, and I just felt off. So I tested a few days before my missed period and sure enough I was pregnant. I was over the moon ecstatic. I think anytime you get a positive pregnancy test, like you just, there's a flood of emotions. Um, and instantly that baby is a baby. At least my thoughts, my opinions, like what I went through as soon as I get a positive pregnancy test, like there is a human, there is a baby growing. Because we were approaching my husband's birthday, it was soon after my husband's birthday, I decided to tell him um, in just a little like personal way. So when we had gotten married, I gave him a gift on our wedding day of all these cigars and each cigar was supposed to um, signify a significant event in our life and one of them was our first baby. So I wrapped up that cigar and I gave it to him as like a belated birthday present. Um, and I think he was terrified to be perfectly honest at first. He did not think it was going to happen that quickly, like sporadically, I guess, because we weren't even really thinking about it. It just happened. So as the days went on, we got more and more excited. Every morning we would look at the app together to see like what progress was going on with the baby. And we would start talking about names and we were calling it by um, like little nicknames and stuff. And I felt great. I had no crazy symptoms. It just, you know, what I expected a pregnancy to be, it was. Flash forward about 10 days later, 10 to 12 days later, I had one night where I had excruciating back pain. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I could not sleep because my back was aching so bad. I mean, it was throbbing. 
And I've always had back problems my, ent my entire life. Um, I have scoliosis, a mild form, but my back will flare up from time to time if I aggravate it and things like that. So I just thought, you know, a combination of being pregnant and my typical back pain, it's probably just what it is. So I just blew it off. And then the next day at work, it was like later in the morning. I remember, you know, going to work, getting my cup of coffee, getting started, sending out some emails for the day and then needing to go to the restroom. So I went to the restroom and I noticed some like pink spotting. But again, I knew that could have been like an early pregnancy symptom. Um, so of course I was worried, but I was trying not to panic because I knew that it could be an early pregnancy symptom. Because of the timing and everything, the original OB that I was going to, you know, it's typical that they don't see you till six or eight weeks into your pregnancy. So my appointment was still a long ways away. I was only, you know, four and a half weeks or five and a half weeks pregnant at that time. And I called the doctor. They said, okay, you know, since you're noticing some spotting, why don't you come in? We'll squeeze you in um, in an hour if you can be here and we'll do an exam and see what's going on. So I called my husband. He was in a meeting. His boss totally understood, met me at the doctor's office. And I remember feeling, you know, somewhat optimistic, but of course worried. So we met with one of the doctors and he was asking me a bunch of questions. Like, when did you test? When was your last period? All that fun stuff. And, um... He said, okay, I just want to do an exam to see what's going on. So he did a pelvic exam and he said everything looked great. This, you know, if you wouldn't have told me you were spotting today, I wouldn't have even noticed. I didn't see any blood um, in your cervix or around your cervix or anything like that. Your cervix is high and closed. So it looks like a typical pregnancy to me. And he said, congratulations, shook our hands. And he said, before you leave, you know, I just want to have, do a quick ultrasound just to triple check or double check. And, um, you know, you should be fine. Shortly after they pulled us into the ultrasound room and the woman came in and she was so bubbly and cheery and happy. I remember she had long, dark, curly hair and she had me lay back. They did a vaginal ultrasound because I was so early and I'll never forget when she, you know, got to the area where she needed to be to see my uterus, I could see a black hole and nothing in it. So you have like your uterus and usually you see like some sort of sac or something in the middle of where the baby or the fetus is growing. And I remember seeing, you know, the uterus, the general area, and then like a little hole and then there was nothing growing inside the little hole. There was no white dot, none of that. And she didn't say anything. She went completely blank. Her whole demeanor totally changed. And she said, okay, well, I'm gonna give the results to the doctor and then the doctor will call you once he's had a chance to review them. Um, but we're just going to do some quick blood work, you know, routine stuff to see where your levels are, yada, yada. So immediately I started crying because what, even though it was my first ultrasound ever, I just felt like something was wrong and it, it didn't look normal to me. So um, my husband was trying to stay calm. He's definitely, you know, the level-headed one between the two of us when it comes to situations, you know, stressful or, you know, any type of situation like that. So we took our blood work and they said they would call us within a few hours to let us know the results. Thankfully, I already called the next day off because Jeff and I were going to Ohio to visit his cousin and to see one of our favorite bands, Boyce Avenue. They're on YouTube, so you may know Boyce Avenue. Um, but anyways, so I already had the next day off. The doctor called me about a few hours later and we were in our guest room, or I was in the guest room. I think my husband was at the gym. The doctor had asked, he's like, you you took a home pregnancy test, it was positive. I said, yeah, I have three or four of them sitting on my nightstand right now, they're all positive. He goes, oh, um, well, the pregnancy test we have here is negative. And I remember being so confused, like how could that be? I have four positive pregnancy tests on my nightstand, like that, that can't, you have somebody else's test, that's not mine. And he said, well, um, you know, we also have your HCG levels and where you say you are in your pregnancy from your last period and how many days or weeks you should be along, the levels should be much, much higher. My, um, you know, my suspicion or my gut is that you're, you're miscarrying, um, especially because we had a negative pregnancy test and your levels are low for your HCG. And I remember being so pissed off at him my initial reaction was like you're calling me a liar 
you congratulated us when that probably wasn't even your right to do so because you didn't have any concrete facts in front of you like our blood work and our ultrasound i remember being so pissed off at him um and he said well you're probably not gonna know when you're gonna miscarry it could be you know a week from now it could be a month from now and i think one of the hardest things to go through during a miscarriage is you're going to grieve in multiple stages. You're going to grieve mentally, and then you're dealing with that loss mentally, and then you're waiting for it to happen physically. So you're waiting for the physical loss to happen, and then you're going to be mourning again when the physical loss actually happens. So I cried, and I sobbed, and I screamed, and I was so, so, so upset, and rightfully so, because that baby to us was a baby. We were talking about names and thinking about due dates and we were going to tell our parents and we had already bought like you know baby gifts to tell them like we're expecting and we just never thought that would happen to us and you never do you never think it's going to happen to you unless you have some sort of diagnosis and miscarriages are so much more common than people like to believe or talk about because nobody really shares their story or talks about it and that's the whole purpose of why i'm sharing this I remember calling my mom and telling her and <laughs> my mom and I have never had the strongest relationship. We just never had that bond. And I remember when I told her I was pregnant, I was so excited. And she said, well, at least it wasn't a baby yet. And I felt so deflated and so angry like how could you say that this was a baby it was our baby it wasn't maybe you know fully developed or whatever but it was a baby in our mind it was you know we, we had dreams and hopes for this child um so that made things even worse for me because i just felt like i was alone like i was calling my mom looking for comfort and sympathy and I just never got it and I knew that if my daughter at the time obviously we didn't know we were going to have a daughter but if I were to have a daughter and she were to experience a miscarriage I know that that is not the reaction that I would want to give her I've just learned so many lessons from my mom um, in that regard. Just so upset about that reaction. And um, you know, Jeff and I were debating like, okay, what do we do tomorrow? Cause I happened on a Thursday, the whole doctor's appointment and the results and everything like that. You know, what do we do about tomorrow? We're supposed to be going to Columbus to go visit your cousins and go to this concert that we've been so excited for. And I just remember, you know what? I'm not going to sit in bed and cry all weekend, even though that's what I want to do. Because like the doctor said, it could have happened within a week, it could have happened within a month. What am I supposed to do? Just lay in bed and feel sorry for myself for the next month, even though I wanted to do that? I wanted to lay in bed and eat ice cream and feel sorry for myself, but I wasn't going to allow myself to do that then. So we decided, you know, we're just going to go anyways. We're going to focus on something else. It hasn't even happened yet. Maybe. And I feel like you almost go through this like denial phase. Like, okay, yeah. You know the doctor told me that we're gonna have a miscarriage or the results are so showing this so but it hasn't happened maybe you know the baby will stick and it will grow to full term so you go through like this denial thing in your head this like conflicting talking back and forth like the angel and the devil like the good and the bad and you're just like you're debating with yourself almost or like negotiating with yourself negotiating with god and all this stuff so anyways um so we decided to pack up our stuff and then the next day we were going to be on our merry way and I remember you know still being sad and somber and all that but I was trying to remain optimistic I guess. It was a four hour drive to his cousin's house so that whole four hour drive you know we just talked and we were both sharing our feelings and you know trying to see the why and everything and we're both faithful people and trying to see you know why would God put us in this situation? And I don't know your beliefs, but that is just something that we um, started to go through 
during this phase of everything so um by the time we got to their house you know i pulled myself together and i just said okay well we're just gonna have a good time we're not gonna tell them we just don't want to go into that we just want to have a good time today so we ended up going to the concert venue we were waiting in line we were in the line for quite some time they had an opener before voice avenue came out and we were on the second floor and we were just talking, like holding onto the railing. It was a very small venue, not very many people. So it was very like open and everything. And I remember feeling that horrid back pain again, almost like PMS back pain. And it just was so crampy and sore and just didn't feel good. And I told Jeff, like, I can't do this. I can't stand here and pretend like we're not going through this like we have to tell them because i was an emotional wreck i couldn't get the words out of my mouth so jeff ended up telling them and they were so 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 like if we could have been with anybody during that they were the two people that i would want to be with they were so compassionate and comforting and supportive um so we all cried and we all talked and um you know we're just gonna enjoy the show and then and then figure out the rest of the night so at one point because my back was hurting so bad we decided to go sit down and like they're open seating so we went to go sit down and we got through maybe like two or three songs and i said i'm sorry i can't do it like my back is hurting like i'm starting to cramp and like my lower pelvic region like we have to leave i'm so sorry but we i can't do this so i said well let me go to the bathroom really quick and then we can go his cousin, husband and wife, and Jeff stayed out in the lobby and I went into the women's restroom. So I went into the restroom, you know, did what I needed to do, and I looked down and there is blood everywhere in the toilet. Um, and I remember just feeling so alone in that moment being in a public restroom without my husband without any like not even like his cousin's wife like being in there with me like obviously not in the stall but just being in the bathroom being able to call out to somebody for help and at that time of course the song had ended so like there was a flood of women coming into the restroom and I remember just having to like okay like giving myself a pep talk like pull up your bootstraps like you have to figure it out right now hopefully you can understand me through all my crying right now um but it was just such a traumatic thing and I don't think I've ever really talked about it out loud like this since then so um so anyway so I tried to clean up myself as much as possible and I didn't have a pad or anything so I just started like stuffing toilet paper in my pants and I remember walking out of the bathroom and seeing my husband and just locking eyes with him and like basically falling to the floor and it was like the best way I could explain it to my husband or to really anybody it was almost like a movie where like everything around you was continuing its life was like moving and like commotion and but like my world was frozen I remember people laughing and singing and I was just like empty I was empty I was hollow and I just wanted to get out of there I wanted to like run and hide basically uh, so we walked back to the car we had to walk a couple blocks to our car and I didn't think it was gonna happen that soon because the doctor you know had said like a week or a month we got to the car we stopped at a CVS Jeff and um, his cousins wife went into CVS and they got like every kind of pad and you know whatever that I would need and chocolate and they were so sweet and my husband's cousin and I were just talking and again like they were the most like God put those people in that moment with us for a reason by the time we got back to their house I had basically locked myself in their bathroom for like two hours I'd say and then like actually miscarried the rest of the pregnancy so thankfully i was able to pass everything on my own i will say that so i didn't have to have a dnc or anything after the miscarriage the loss actually happened i can tell you that the physical symptoms completely went away almost instantly just like when you have a baby as soon as that baby comes the symptoms basically completely disappear i remember 
initially after the physical loss had actually happened I almost felt relieved in a sense I don't even know if that's the right word but I almost felt like there was a lift in my spirit maybe just because it happened I was no longer dreading it to happen because the physical loss had happened so I was very grateful that it happened quickly and I didn't have to wait around for it to happen or have to go through a DNC I guess after that you know I went through a very roller coaster morning period and so did my husband you know I went through stages where I pitied myself and why me and I remember feeling so pissed off at my body like I try to take extreme care of myself you know I, I worked out three to five days a week for years I've always pride myself in you know being physically active and being extremely conscious of the foods I eat and being um just being like a well-rounded healthy person I remember I take such good care of my body how could it let me down like this how how could my body do this to me and um I remember wanting to reach out to my previous um OB you know she had called me and I explained the situation to her and she said okay well let me get the results from your doctor you know the previous doctor you saw and I'll call you back um, when I have a chance to review them and we'll talk about everything. Um, you know, she was confused as to why, you know, they didn't give me any sort of reason. They kind of just left you hanging. And I said, yeah, and that was one of the hardest parts was they never gave me a reason. And, you know, and that can be very traumatic on its own because then you're constantly wondering, like, what's wrong with my body? Is there something wrong with my husband? Why didn't this baby stick? Was it like a genetic thing? So, you know, you just, you go into this like hamster wheel of all these negative thoughts. I love my OB so much and I'm so thankful for her. Um, so she called me back and she went through every single thing with me, my blood work, the ultrasounds. And she said, well, what you had was a blighted ovum. And I'd never heard about that before. I said, oh, what? And she said, basically what happens is the egg and the sperm meet. So the egg gets fertilized, it implants, but there's some chromosomal um, abnormality with it. So a fetus never actually ends up developing. So it starts to act like a pregnancy, but eventually your body recognizes that there's nothing there and then you end up miscarrying. Um, so that's what happened and if you want more um, information about a blighted ovum I'm sure you could just uh, you know type into Google and more information will come up and she said you know because you miscarried everything in your own she had asked me tons of questions about what it looked like when I miscarried just to make sure that everything um, you know came out on its own and um, she said you know I am extremely positive that you lost everything on your own so no worry about DNC and she said because you lost it so early you know after your next cycle you're free to try again and she said when that happens I want you to come see me I will give you the best care that I possibly can and I just felt so comforted in that moment and felt like I could kind of move on and it's different for everybody you know my cousin lost a baby at 20 weeks and um, it's almost been a year and they still don't feel ready so for us we felt like we could try after our next cycle and we did and we got pregnant with Peyton and we were seriously blessed with the best little girl but I can tell you that you know that month leading up to it I had to go through a lot of healing and you know the healing that I found was through spirituality and faith and watching sermons and I'll actually link the um, pastor that I watched his name is Stephen Furtick and he has Elevation Church um, and he by far got me through um, all of the demons that I experienced through my miscarriage but you know I just want if you're going through this right now and just know that you are not alone and I know what you're feeling right now and it's okay to be pissed it's okay to cry it's okay to feel okay you're gonna have days where you're okay with it um, but just know that with faith um you will get your rainbow baby i know you will um so if you've experienced a loss i really want this video and my channel to be community for all women um or even men who are going through 
um, life changes. So if you feel comfortable, if you want to write a comment or anything below, I know that will be extremely helpful to other people watching this video um, or anybody reading the comments. So please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you join my community on this channel here and um, I will see you in the next video and it will be a much more positive, fun video. So I will see you in the next one. I hope you have a wonderful day and um, catch you later. Bye guys.